We got the hot rod on the plate yesterday. Uh, Jerry and I spent the day getting the roll centers correct. Uh, as you see here, I've got my center line. Um, these lower pivot points, they will get moved vertical. You can adjust your roll center by moving them vertical, but they never move out. So because those two are 18 and a quarter center, um, 9 and an eighth, right to the center of that, I've always got that measurement. Yeah, it'll change up and down, but uh, that's a static point, so that's where I choose to run my my string line. Um, I've seen other guys do it differently. Whatever works for you, this is the way I've done it since uh, 2003, and this is the way I'm going to keep doing it. Um, we got the roll center all figured out. We got our lower squared. I'm going to change my strut arms. Those are just mock-up arms uh, for now, but uh, yeah, really happy with that. Since we got the front right, it's all correct. We're able to get the rear in place. We got the rear squared off of the square tabs. Um, use our string bars. I added these string bars. We've done this before. Basically, I take a piece of steering shaft, three quarter OD, 120 wall, take a half inch bolt, a long one with a shoulder. I cut the head off of it, slide it in there. I put a uh, weld bung. It's just a half inch coarse weld bung here. Um, take a measurement and when you have a straight rail car when that rail is perfectly straight all the way back it's easy to measure those you can set them both at like 26 or whatever when you have a car with an offset clip like these furies do you've got to measure that dis that distance difference between those rails and incorporate that into the string bar here is our rear string bar and on this one i've actually got two sets of holes this inside hole is the one we use for our Fury. This outside hole is what we use for our Port City because they are in line. This is the difference. This is the offset difference on a Fury right here, the difference between these two lines. So this string runs parallel to the main frame rail in the car. Now by having that there, I can put my square against it and I've always got my right side alignment right there at hand. Just screw those in, ready to measure it. One of the last things I'm gonna do um, while I'm finishing up the front end is I'm going to put it on this really, really short block. That's basically going to be our max travel, you know, plus or minus that little bit. Um, I'm going to put it on that, and I'm going to check to make sure I have full travel in the wheels to make sure I get past my travel points. I got it in basically full travel, and I still have... A bunch of room this just ensures that you don't have a ball joint bound up or or like a strut arm heim or something bound up uh causing the car to you know not act correctly when you land into the corner Now that we're to this point, we got our roof jig down, we're ready to start hanging the body. Time for a quick update. We've got the uh, the roof and the quarters with the tail all put together. Um, we've got them on the car. I've got them located using the roof fixture. The first thing I built was my rear supports, my rear bumper, uh, the uprights. I just took that and spray painted it. I mean, it's going to get pitted. It's going to get beat up, but I wasn't going to wait for powder. So rather than you know waiting a week to get it back or you know a few days at the at the least. I just went ahead and painted it. It'll be fine. I've got my uh, aluminum body supports. I may end up adding a couple more that go up to the back of the spoiler off of that center tab. Um, but I also have to use that center tab and I may add another one off of these to support uh, this, the front of this rear deck, the back of the windshield. When we get the window in it, obviously that's going to act as, you know, kind of a gusset with the tin. Um, but for now, I think it's a little bit weak and it shows it's a little bit low. So I may support that up with a couple of body supports, but, uh, got the roof mounted with my roof supports. I like using these, uh, these, you know, spoiler supports up there. It's kind of a cute little way to do it. It's clean. It's nice. It gives you a little bit of adjustment. They're not super heavy, but, 
Um, there are lighter ways to do it by using those uh, adjustable body supports like we have on the back there, but I don't think they're as firm. I think they tend to slip a little bit. Uh, I also designed this little guy there. That is right at 10 inches back where they measure your roof height at 47 inches. So I added that little guy there to ensure that that's never going to be an issue. Uh, I just took a couple of old fender supports, or excuse me, spoiler supports. I cut down the, uh, the little piece there in the middle, re-threaded it. So the top one's right hand, the bottom one's left hand. I used a Joe's accessory mount. Um, yeah, it worked out pretty good. There's my front roof support. Uh, I don't have the one on the left rear. I don't have enough parts to make that one, unfortunately. But uh, the rest of it's done. Here you can see our reservoir set up. That's the uh, Tilton Small Reservoir. These are number four lines. Uh, like I said before, these 76 master, 76 series master cylinders from Tilton. Uh, that's a number four screw in fitting a male four to four. We put a copper washer on them to ensure that they're nice and sealed. But uh, yeah, that's nice and clean. I always run these little kick panels down here to protect my masters. We've seen masters get busted off before and uh, it's just an easy way to protect them. Uh, doesn't provide anything other than just protection for those brakes in that foot box. When you are putting your body on, always look at your wheel well opening. If this wheel is not in the center of that wheel well opening, something is wrong somewhere. Also, keep an eye on your overlap from your quarter panel to your tire. If, uh, if the, the tire's way in or way out, obviously, again, you've got something incorrect. As you can see on this, our tires are both very similar, and we are centered on both wheel wells. That's where she's got to be. Once you get the heights, lock it down. We spoke earlier about this bar and how I prefer to run it, and I've been putting it in all my cars. Um, you can see with these Kenny seats and these new race cars, it's like they keep moving the driver farther and farther and farther to the left to try to get that center of gravity better. Um, with these Kenny seats, they sit so far out, and it's got such a big headrest that I've got to cut into that B pillar. By adding this bar, um, I'm just going to build an aluminum fill panel for this so that there's no way to access it. There's no way you're going to run a net over the outside of it. It's just not possible. And there's no way you could run a net inside of it. Um, so the best way to do it is I put my hole right there for my window net. I actually reinforced it with a washer just so that it's good and strong. Um, and then I'll build a panel over this. I'm not trying to gain a whole bunch of arrow. In fact, I'm probably going to leave a big opening here for my helmet blower to hook up and just run it right back to my fan. But uh, yeah, I'm telling you, that, that, that bar, look at a lot of your race cars. Look at the cars you're running against and uh, tell me if you think that that bar should be uh, mandatory or not. One... Oh, wrong hand. One of the last things I'm going to do 